We are picking up our reading in A Course in Miracles, CE, Complete and Annotated Edition. And we are reading Miracle Principle number 24 on page 15 of the new Complete and Annotated Edition of the um, A Course in Miracles. If you would please join me in prayer to start. Dear God, if left to my own devices, my perceptions will be skewed only but always. Please enable me to set aside everything I think I know, to have an open mind and a new experience. Please give me your vision. Help me to be a channel for you today. Please help me to be who you would have me be, do what you would have me do, go where you would have me go, and say what you would have me say. I thank you, God, for my many blessings, and everything's a blessing. Help me to recognize that. Amen. Okay, so 24 miracles are part of an interlocking chain of forgiveness, which when completed is the atonement. This process works all the time and in all dimensions of time. And again, this references Cameo 5, the shield report, which we read yesterday. I am in charge of the process of atonement which I undertook to begin. My atonement was for the canceling out of all sins which you could not otherwise correct. Go down to 31. In the course, the atonement as an event refers to the resurrection, not the crucifixion. That is what the biblical statement underneath are the everlasting arms means. 32. Deuteronomy 33.27 The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. According to the above passage, in the process of correcting our errors, we are supported by God. Our efforts need not be sufficient because He, by the way of the atonement, will make up for, sorry about that, whatever we cannot accomplish on our own. However, it is clear that when you can atone by miracles, both giver and and receiver are atoning. It is better to atone this way because of the mutual benefits involved. Inasmuch as you do it unto the least of these, my brethren, really ends with you do it unto yourself and me. 33. This is a version of Matthew 25:40. Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren you did it to me this is from the parable of the sheep and the goats where the eternal faith of both is decided by whether or not they serve the hungry thirsty estranged sick naked imprisoned for whatever they did to those they did to the king The reason why you come before me is because I do not need miracles for my own atonement, but I stand at the end in case you fought, fail temporarily. So the reason why you can't come before me is because I do not need miracles for my own atonement, but I stand at the end in case you fail temporarily. The word sin should really be absence of love. Sin is a man-made word with threat connotations he made up himself. No real threat is involved anywhere. Just because nature ab abhors a vacuum, which is true enough, it does not follow that a vacuum is filled with hellfire. And we're going to go down to 34. The saying, nature abhors a vacuum, is usually attributed to Aristotle. In this case, the vacuum is an absence of love, and obviously a vacuum of love should be filled not with hellfire, but with love. Nothing is gained by... frightening yourself, and it's very destructive. 
Nothing is gained by frightening yourself, and it's very destructive. Miracles need freedom from fear. 35. Miracles here refers to doing miracles. The concept of miracles as an internal healing has not been mentioned yet. In other words, to give miracles, you need to be free of fear. That freedom from fear is, how, is part of how miracles atone, how they undo old mental patterns in the receiver. I just am looking for where I left off. Come on, 35, jump out at me. No, Bentley. Say no. He wants, he tries to play. Obviously, when he, he's like a child, when he doesn't have my attention. Okay, so, where is it? Okay, sorry, it's at the very top. Part, okay, miracles need freedom from fear. Part of their atonement value involves that very freedom. The word atone really means undo. If you will look up atonement, you will find that an obsolete meaning is to set at one or reconcile to agree. Obviously, before reconciliation or agreement is possible, what is out of accord must be undone. It may seem as if darkness must be dispelled before the light can come in. But the truth is that darkness is dispelled by light. The next part of the Course will place increasing emphasis on atonement, since changing learning patterns requires undoing the old ones. The real meaning of retroactive inhibition is simply that when two kinds of learning coexist, they interfere with each other. 36. Retroactive inhibition is where new learning interferes with the recall of previous learning. This tends to be viewed as a negative, but Jesus is framing it as a positive. Sometimes the new learning is the more important and has to inhibit the old. Therefore, when you say, if you want me to, I will, please add, and if you don't want me to, I won't. This is the right use of inhibition. There has to be some control over learning for channelizing purposes. Sometimes the new learning is the more important, and each has to inhibit the old. It is a form of correction. It's a form of correction. So I, I skipped over 37. There has to be some control over learning for channelizing purposes. 37, for channelizing purposes, means for purposes of channeling miracles when and where asked to by Jesus. Everything that results in lack of love, which you used to call, which you used to call sin, is the result of inferior learning, which, if overlearned, becomes very stable. Miracles are a way of undoing overlearned patterns of love lack. They bring light into darkness. That is where their atonement value lies. All right, and I'm going to stop there. I, I was able to get the notes today from the Course Companion. So I'm not going to go back and read 8 and 9 for days 8 and 9, but I will read for day 10. Let me just pull that out while you wait, if you would. Because you should, everyone should have these if they're in the group. And if you're not in the group, please get in the group. Please join the Course Companions on Facebook. Day 10. This is chapter one, principle, miracle principle number four. Twenty-four, sorry. There are so many terms repeating and interacting here. Miracles, forgiveness, atonement, cancel, dispel, undo, correct, fear, freedom, sin, absence of love, love, va love lack, vacuum, darkness, light, learning, learning patterns, new, old, 
inhibition and overlearned. In some way, they all go together, but how? About the principle itself, the story told in the Shield Report, Shield Report cameo really helps to clarify what's happening. In terms of getting the concept, it's beneficial to start with the interlocking chain of forgiveness. Forgiveness here means the canceling of someone's mistake, i.e. sin or error. The interlocking chain of forgiveness is a chain of such cancellations and it may help to picture this as a grid or a web. The basic idea is that my forgiveness of you doesn't stop there because you will then forgive others and so on. In other words, none of the links in the chain are isolated. They are all inextricably connected to other links. So what happens when you perform a miracle? Picture it lightening up one of those links, making that link go live, if you will. Each miracle activates a sector of the overall grid, and when the entire grid is activated, then the atonement is complete. Another important aspect of this principle is how serious Jesus is about undoing our previous learning. He really wants those old, overlearned patterns of love lack to be gone. This, of course, is because old learning inhibits new learning. Oh, that's why I say the open mind prayer. Because I can be convinced I'm right in something. And I have no clue. The new learning then becomes much harder to absorb, harder to retain, and harder to act on, and harder to live by, and harder to remember. And then we wonder why the course itself is so hard. Jesus wants you to undo the love lack in yourself, and he wants you, through miracles, to undo it in others. Can you do that? I can't do it without, without God. There's no way. That is for sure. So, um, this reminded me, what came to my mind when I read this was, you know, judging, judging blessings, basically. Because, you know, when my dad died, I don't even like to use the word die, but when my father passed away and my brother passed away and my mom, I have two moms, but when my moms passed away, I couldn't see that as a blessing by itself, okay? Because I want to judge it and to be a victim, okay? My pain, you know, I can use my pain even, my pain in my back, because I have a horrible, horrible back, and it's just gotten worse since, you know, it, it was bad when I had my son, when I gave birth 23 years ago, <laughs> and it's still bad, and it's just getting worse with age, so I use that, I can use that to define me and project what's going on and not see it's not definitely not see it as a blessing how in the hell can pain be a blessing right or how in the how can loved ones dying be a blessing but this is this web that she's talking about here i believe it's emily wrote this okay this web is exactly how because i'm it's not my place to judge it it is a part of the web that's lighting up and i can't see the whole web so this is what came to mind when I was reading this about the miracles. What happens when I perform a miracle is, is that that's exactly how everything is. You know, it's all a blessing. Everything's a blessing because it's, you know, it's only separation or love, fear or love. And when I'm in fear, it's not truth. So only is love truth, only is, only is the true true. And love being true is the reality. And when I'm not in love, 
I'm choosing to be separate from God and not trust and not have faith and not believe and not accept but rather judge based on my fearful upbringing, you know, all that crazy, sick stuff that I can hold on to sometimes and, and help paint the world, this world, help color this world from my past. Anyway, I'm just rambling on, but this is what came up for me and I thought I'd share it and hopefully it's helpful to you. Or you could have just stopped. You can certainly, you don't have to listen to me. <laughs> anyway, I love you. Hey there. Thank you for being with me in this reading. Until tomorrow, have a beautiful day. I love you.